The U.S. Secretary of State says the Trump administration is in direct contact with North Korea. Rex Tillerson says Washington has a couple of channels open to Pyongyang and is gauging interest in dialogue toward denuclearization. Tillerson was visiting Beijing for meetings with Chinese President Xi Jinping and other officials. He said the whole situation is a bit overheated right now and everyone would like for it to calm down. He added that it would help if North Korea would stop firing off missiles and that it would calm things down a lot. But diplomatic sources say North Korea shows no interest in dialogue on its nuclear and missile programs. Meanwhile, North Korea is believed to have carried out another test of a ballistic missile engine last month, which failed and exploded during testing. That's according to Japanese newspaper Asahi Shimbun on Saturday, which adds that South Korea and U.S. officials believe it was an engine for a submarine-launched ballistic missile, or SLBM, possibly the Apukuksung-3. The failed test is said to have taken place at the eastern port city of Shimpo, home to a shipyard that makes the regime submarines. It's reported that the explosion may have injured or even possibly killed several engineers. The U.S. is expected to send its nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, the USS Ronald Reagan, to waters near the Korean Peninsula later this month to take part in combined exercises with South Korea's Navy. A Seoul defense official said on Sunday that the joint drills will take place in the East Sea around mid-October and will simulate the intercepting of North Korean ballistic missiles. The USS Ronald Reagan, based in Yokosuka, Japan, will likely come as part of a strike group with other warships, including Aegis destroyers and nuclear submarines. This comes after the US flew B-1B strategic bombers and fighter jets near North Korea's border last week, which the regime then condemned and threatened to shoot out of the sky. China's Global Times on August 1, 2014 confirmed the existence of the latest Dongfeng-41, known as DF-41, intercontinental ballistic missile. The confirmation came from the official website of the Shaanxi Province's Environmental Surveillance Center, which mentioned related environmental surveillance projects at the military base, where the DF-41 was completed and tested. The Chinese-made ICBM is a solid-fueled, and road mobile missile capable of carrying multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, that had previously been reported to be under development. Prior to the report, there was no confirmation of its existence however, although pictures purported to be of the DF-41, have been on the internet for quite some time. The DF-41 is believed to have a range of between 11,000-12,000 kilometers. The multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles it carries would allow a single DF-41 to strike at different cities in the United States simultaneously. The latest, Military Power of the People's Republic of China, report, an annual analysis compiled by the Pentagon, said in its latest version, published on June 5, that DF-31 is the latest ICBM for China's military, while the DF-41 is still under development. An anonymous military analyst told Global Times that the development of the DF-41 is necessary because of the continuing threats from the United States and its terminal high-altitude area defense system known as THAAD. THAAD is an anti-ballistic missile system designed by the United States Army to shoot down incoming missile threats. PLA spokesperson Gang Yansheng said, research and development is normal for the military without any specific enemy in mind. Meanwhile, Beijing's nuclear weapons policy of no first strike will not change, Geng said. Because of the missile's mobility, it is extremely difficult to be tracked by satellite. The Washington Free Beacon said the DF-41 with its ability to carry up to 10 nuclear warheads represents a potent threat to the national security of the continental United States. 
The DF-41 is estimated to have an operational range of between 12,000 km and 15,000 km, which also makes it the missile with the longest range in the world. The top speed of a DF-41 is estimated to be Mark 25. off from San Juan, a route Stephen has flown hundreds of times, but this is the scariest sky traffic he's ever seen. He said you could sense the tension in the air traffic controller's voice. Absolutely. The airports have no working radar, so every slow Cessna and every fast jet is flying by sight in a dust-filled sky. The airspace is so crazy. It's actually dangerous uh, right now. We cross over resorts and neighborhoods all shattered by Maria. And eight miles later, touch down amid shattered airplanes as some of the first outsiders to reach Vegas since the storm. We're just picked up by Maria and thrown here. And look at these over on this side. Broken planes are just the first signs of Maria's strength. The entire island is ravaged from the swanky W Hotel to the boats of Mosquito Bay. 
That is the cabin of a catamaran for tourists called the Naughty Mermaid. And if it looks a little bit odd, it's because it's flipped upside down by what the locals say were 200 mile an hour winds. Three, two, one. <laughs> in happier times, the glow-in-the-dark plankton that lives in this bay helps lure the tourists that drive the economy. There is no salvaging the upcoming high season, but that is a worry for later. Right now is about survival. We out of food, we're running out of food and water. <laughs> that is the kind of heartbreaking, soul-draining uh, scene that's getting played out again and again as people look at her cry as she gets on a sat phone for the first time. Oh my God. It crushes your soul to watch that. And this is the line. This is a two hour line of folks waiting to give proof of life to a wife or a husband or a father. Ah, it's rough. I love you. How's that feel? Can I see your eyes? Can you move your uh, sunglasses yeah. for me? <laughs> We're doing all right. You know, it's yeah. just, uh, yeah, it's this tough. We need help. You know, so go back and tell them. That's tell why I'm here, brother. That's I know you're here. here. Yeah. Go back and tell them. You need help. You know, tell the president, our senators, everybody needs help here. Tell Archie I lost everything. After the storm blew through, you flew down here with a bag of satellite phones? First, first flight. We had a lot of uh, folks in the U.S. that were stepping up and contributing and we decided the most important thing was to establish communication because we weren't hearing from anybody. When is help coming? There are a lot of people who have promised to bring supplies, but it hasn't arrived yet, the deputy mayor tells me. Red tape seems to be their biggest enemy. The relief efforts and the, the aid, some of it may be coming. We're here and we're trying to get those coordinations, those clearances, those orders to be issued so we can get them because the island is feeling this type of pressure yeah. and the tensions are running high. Do you feel American at moments like this? Do you feel neglected at moments like this? Somewhere in between. I think I think we have to take a deep breath and say, you know, we are U.S. citizens. It's been a hundred years since Woodrow Wilson in 1917 made us U.S. citizens. It should mean something. And and right now we are we are we are uh, the forgotten island, and, and that, that shouldn't be. For years, the U.S. Navy used this island for target practice until the locals got fed up. What better way to make it up to them? by storming the beaches with aid instead of bombs. This is something that needs and requires someone who knows how to distribute goods in the middle of, of almost a war zone. So you're making a plea for martial law? I am making a plea for martial law. I'm making a plea for for um, a, a having three, four, five days where we can distribute diesel, where we can distribute water, where we can give food. I mean, it's been six days after the hurricane and it's, it's just a horrible scenario in Puerto Rico. I just need you to tell my mom I'm okay. Do you have her number? Brittany moved here from Brooklyn four years ago. Now she's helpless because she has no cash in a cash-only society. Thank you, I love you. Bye. Ready? Mama, everything's gonna be alright. Okay? Of course I can. I have no f***ing money. They won't let us get money. Yeah. And I can't use my debit card, so right. we're all screwed. Like, here's, here's I don't even bucks. know what to do. Here's a few bucks. <laughs> oh my god. This is so stressful. We're okay. Like, we're, we're not gonna die, but. Like, there's no help. This is the only help. Robert Becker has saved everybody here. Like, I don't know what else to say, but private citizens have come through for us, and no one else really has.